These are philosophical questions and ones that we still wrestle with and why art is, is still so relevant. And to paraphrase one of my favorite quotes, which we've talked about on the show by Frederick Buchner, uh, he says, art is one of the few places left where we can speak to each other of holy things, right? When we're so um, divorced from religion and, and spirituality to a large degree, it's just like we still need to have places where we can talk about what this some way to talk about this stuff mm -hmm. right to, to engage with these philosophical questions and i think that we're we we've we've stopped engaging with a lot of these things and we've said we've tried to fill that gap with um you know cars and streaming services and <laughs> <laughs> this is way of the artist with brandon colby cook and evan schulte exploring the challenges of the creative call so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Welcome to the show, people. This is the show. <laughs> Way of the artist. Okay, well, uh, today we're talking about big picture stuff. We don't really have a title just yet, but it will it will come in time. So the thing that we've been discussing, everything that we've been discussing seems to keep coming back to this big picture thing. And you go down this rabbit hole or you look at something and you go, it's a bigger and a bigger and a bigger picture. And so what I'm kind of entering this idea with is that in our own lives, we only have such a small slice of the big picture of all that is the big massive play that is life that's mm -hmm. going on and so our little slice becomes everything it's so important to us and it's the world to us mm -hmm. yet we don't always see how it relates to the bigger thing and how it all connects and i was thinking about this actually we just listened to some alan watts which i'll give him a little shout out about the artist and how you know we 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 try to look at things like we might be looking at a branch and then we forget that the branch is connected to the to the tree and then the tree is connected to the forest and the forest is connected to the mountain hill and 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 so on and so on and and it keeps getting bigger right and and what we think is this one little thing we're looking at is so important and it means so much but it does but not the way we think it does i think what i'm realizing this was something Evan just said, and it kind of, he's like, don't take that from me. <laughs> but basically, our little piece of the pie actually connects to the big picture. And it's important that we see that and don't lose sight of that. Because actually, it's actually where the meaning, I don't know, I'm losing it. But that's yeah. basically what I got. Okay, you got past it to you. Oh, God. Okay, well... <laughs> Yeah, this, I feel like this is in some ways a theme that we've been almost exploring over the last couple of, of recordings and episodes that we've been, we've been doing. And also, you know, this thing of, of the bigger picture, I think that another way of looking at, at that as well is, is going deeper, which is very much like an, when an artist thing is just like, you know, we've got to go deeper and deeper and deeper, trying to understand more of the the truth of something, right? And, and I think that artists at artists, like great artists are always trying to communicate something big, something, something, I dare say universal. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't think there are universal truths, but I, I think that there are, there are definitely spaces where a large variety of human beings connect on something like we can we can connect on some pretty simple fundamental things like like love you know like that's that's and and family and and friendship connection you know like these are things in, that we all that we all want and desire and and cherish and and things like that so and and things well beyond that but these are the kinds of things that i think that artists are trying to dig deeper into mm -hmm. and sometimes there's 
it can be through look, taking a a spotlight onto some onto some very specific thing but it's usually always in service of trying to find something in that little thing that expresses something bigger right that expresses some big universal truth um that that we relate because as we've talked about many times for art is so much about connection mm -hmm. right so much about connecting us as people and i mean this i feel like we're in some general territory right now with this because we're just uh, like well let's we're, we're thinking about just big picture and 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 we'll sort of figure out where that's going to go with us on this one in terms of exploring finding the big picture or or the importance of the big picture i think that me the last thing i'll say before i hand it back off to you is in our world today people are so specialized in in their fields and there's a value to that but we're also running into issues where people don't know how to talk to each other anymore or people have such a hard time connecting or, or figuring out big problem things because everyone's so siloed in their own little area and not really bringing it together with with others so i think that's one of the things about uh the big picture stuff and 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 the deeper picture stuff is that um we don't i think that we run the risk of of losing out on a very important conversation or dialogue not just with others but with ourselves so i don't know if if <laughs> that gives you anything to jump off of brandon because i know i just kind of said a bunch of stuff yeah uh you know well let me take this in a bit of a different direction just because do it i, I feel like this is one of those things where it's very easy to get lost in the whole thing because as you're expanding out and trying to look at a bigger thing, you all of a sudden lose sight of the smaller thing. And I think that's why we like smaller, more like siloed things because we feel we can control it. We can have a handle on it. Like if you're a specialist in some study of science, for example, you're like, well, I know everything about the liver and it's like, no, everything, you know? And so it's like, mm -hmm. good, you can control that. That makes sense to you. But you know, maybe you don't know how the foot connects to the liver. And to you, that's woo-woo and it's not disconnected. And yet someone over an Eastern study is like, no, like if you touch this put on the this part on the foot, it actually is connected. You're going to feel it. There's a sense here. Mm -hmm. And and so there's this kind of um, connectedness and that can start to get quickly overwhelming because we start to see, well, hey, everything's connected to everything and where does it end? And ah, you know, yeah. Whatever. Um, so I think there's a, there's an element of that we're trying to, to approach here. I also think that there is, um, oh, I don't know, like, uh, when you, I think the, the value of this conversation comes in the sense that once you recognize something is connected to something that you didn't know was connected to it, it changes your perception and opens up your world. So one of the ones that I love change the game for me and I always teach this to my clients is the concept that and this wasn't this I, this was saying wasn't mine I got this from uh, one of the great speakers of the past it was either like I think it was like a Les, Les Brown I don't even know if Les Brown got it from somebody the point is is here's a saying you don't get what you want you get what you are this is huge because once you recognize this it changes everything for you and makes everything all of a sudden just make sense. So you don't get what you want, you get what you are. So if you ask for something, you say, I want this thing in my life. I want massive success. I want to win an Oscar. I want to, whatever the thing is that you said that you want. The universe, God, however you want to look at it, your highest self, whatever it is for you, that little part of you that is your subconscious that you don't even know is, is acting once you activate it, it goes, okay, that's what we're after. And then it goes, now, now we have to go get it. And, it. and it recognizes this higher form, this thing that, that you don't see is connected to everything, but it is connected to everything and it has some type of connection 
whether it's aware or not or whatever, or it's just innate. Who knows? I don't know where it comes from. The point is, is that it goes, you want this, now I'm going to make you this. So if you said, I want to be like, so for me, for example, when I was younger, I said, I want to be one of the greatest storytellers of our time, or I want to be the greatest storyteller of our time. These are mm -hmm. things I would say over and over and over again. So my higher self, my God, the universe, whatever goes, okay, let's make you a great storyteller. Do you think it just goes, okay, I'm going to just get you to sit down and write a book and then boom, all these perfect words will pour out of you. No, it doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. The way it works is I'm going to put you through some fucking events. I'm going to break your heart. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to show you things that most people never see. I'm going to, I'm going to take you on journeys across the world and back so that you can see these things and meet these people and do this stuff. Cause that's what a great storyteller is. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want, that's what you will become. And so once you see that you are what you want, when you have this tough event happen in your life, instead of scorning it and being like, oh, why does this happen to me? Why is everything so tough? Remember what you asked for. Hmm. Because you are the tree that is growing towards the sun. And you said the sun is over there. And so then the tree must find its way to the sun and you are finding your way to what you want. So when something bad happens to you, don't look at it as bad. Look at it as a gift. Mm -hmm. This must be serving something I said I wanted. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten it. And some people, they go into this whole thing. It was like, well, that's woo woo. That's like not really connected. Like, how do you know that? It's like, well, you know what? I don't. But here's the thing. It helps me live a good life and it helps me not be fucking depressed when something bad happens. And you know what? At the end of the day, it actually is pretty true. If you look back at your life, you're going to find out that most everything you've ever had, actually it is everything, but you might not be able to see it all. But everything you have, it's because you became who was the person that would get it. Mm -hmm. You didn't just get it because you wanted it. And we know this, and here's further proof. We know this because ask the world for something you want that you aren't in line with. And I, <laughs> good luck getting it. Mm -hmm. Good luck getting it. You know, like those people who go, oh, I'd love a million dollars, but you don't ever believe you could be someone that, that has a million dollars. Because you aren't willing to become a millionaire, you won't get a million because, do you see what I mean? You have to be before you get. And, mm -hmm. and this, this, this is, um, like, like it's like a, I don't know, one, one more analogy, a, sh a tree that wants to provide shade can only provide as much shade as big as it is. Right. Let's right. just say that's what it wants to do. You, you can't nurture and take care of things with your shade until you grow into the thing that can create shade. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can't ask to have the thing without being the thing. And, and once this, this mindset uh, shifts in your head, everything that happens in this world is all connected and you start to see it's all a big gift, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, and I'm not, I didn't come up with this idea. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, this is something that I started to stumble across and I started to realize everything is who I've become, you know? And yeah. even the bad shit I get, it's because of who I am. And that, you know, and just face that, right? And you go, you don't like what you're getting. Look at who you're being, right? And and you you will get the products of your harvest, right? You, mm -hmm. you keep planting seeds, you're going to get those. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think that there's also for people who, who cringe a little bit at some of the more woo-woo type of... <laughs> Yeah. vocabulary that you you were warning <laughs> warning about is i i don't i think that there's a there's also a pretty you can look at it in a rational view as well it's like well okay so if you there's something that you want in your life or want to do in your life and you set yourself into motion to doing that thing it's it's gonna set a sort of like a a chain of responses in in the world right you're gonna it's gonna force you into situations interactions challenges all kinds of things that you don't know are there right like there's 
there, I mean, there's going to be ones that you, that you probably will know that's like, okay, I'm probably going to face some of these things, but there's always stuff that you can't, that, that you're never going to be able to, to know or account for. Right. And some of those things, yeah, like you might end up bemoaning them and, and, you know, just like, oh, why is it, this got to be that way? And da, 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 da. Well, all of those, all of those challenges are teaching you how you, how to do that thing, right? This, this step that's there, it's like, well, yeah, you're running into this because you've never done this before or faced this before. So now you have to face this thing and work through it, right? So it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily some kind of woo woo thing. I think that it's no. like, yeah, like it's, it's like if you actually set something into, into motion, I think that, and, and you alluded to that where it's, you know, just saying, oh, I want this. And then, and then doing nothing, you know, like there's like a, we're hearing like a, a story about just sort of like a little parable about this person who was, uh, was praying every day. Um, like, please God, let me win the lottery. Right. And, oh, yeah. and for, you know, for, for over a year, like, let me win the lottery. And eventually this person heard, after not, you know, ha having not won the lottery and then, and then God responds, just like, it's like, well, why don't you buy a ticket? <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, there's, <laughs> there's something that you got to put, put into motion at the very least, you know, like you got to, there's, there's some sort of action movement that, that you have to actually take. It's not just about if you want it hard enough, which, you know, apologies to anyone who's a fan of the secret. Um, but, but, you yeah. know, it's like, that's, that's not really, that's not really how, how the world works. Well, let, let me say something about that because I mean, the secret was, you know, basically turned into something where they can make a lot of money really. And it was, you know, I mean, what sells that or what sold that at the time, and this was, if, if this is before your time and you're a little younger, like basically this book and this this DVD or this documentary, documentary came yeah. out and it was like called The Secret and it was all about how you can manifest and have everything you want, which is, there's a truth to it. The problem is, is that the way it was marketed and presented was really just like, because people buy easy. People are like, oh, I could just think about it and feel it and I can have what I want. It's like, well, yeah, kind of, but not not exactly. But you're, you're kind of missing some things. Like, for example, yeah. it does say this in The Secret. Because I was like, let me review this. I have to look at this thing. Because like, what, what what's going on here? And it does say, hey, when the opportunity presents itself, act on it. But it's been such a l small amount of time yeah. like, talking about that. It's like, yeah. wait a minute. You're, you are like, you will, if you do think about something and you put energy towards it and you continually feel it in your life as though it's already happened, what will happen is not that you will get it necessarily, but it will present opportunities for you to get it. And when those opportunities come, you have to act on them and be in the practice of acting on them. And by the way, the path to what you want is not always obvious. So sometimes you're like, oh, like, why would I talk to this old lady at the grocery store who seems to be, you know, <laughs> talking nonsense? Little did you know that she was the grandmother of the, the, the business executive who was going to give you the career opportunity that was going to open up your life. And like, you know, or maybe that, you know, for example, I, um, you know, I got into the film industry. One of the people I met, one of the casting directors, I sold her shoes. And we were just talking about runners and she's like, oh, you know, I'm in the film industry and blah, blah, blah. And we were talking about it. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm getting into acting. She's like, great. Anytime I'm going to bring you into the room because I sold her a pair of shoes with gusto. Yeah. Who the fuck knows what you're doing and how things are connected? The thing is, is that you have to be open and you have to be willing to talk about what you want. And you have to mm -hmm. be willing to engage with it and take action and do stuff. And so... You know, and, and yeah, it isn't really that woo-woo. The thing is, is that I look at it like it, it's woo-woo because we don't have a way to rationally describe it, mm -hmm. essentially. And we yeah. don't understand it entirely. And I think this is where, like, art fills in a lot of gaps for us. It fills in that magic area where we're like, mm. I don't really know how this works, but 
I'm going to kind of trust. And you, we talked a lot about this in the podcast, yeah, yeah. right? And yeah. So I feel like, um, you know, like I'm not, I'm not going to say that the secret is not, is, is just bad. It's just that it's incomplete in its presentation and it, it puts too much weight on, um, in my opinion, it just puts too much weight on, on one thing without putting weight on the other thing, which is yeah. the, sometimes the pain that you have to go through and the, and the, and the discomfort of action. Here's a quote yeah. I heard. I'll, one last thing, Evan. You will, you will always have a philosophy to back up your whatever you want to call it. And, and in this case, it would be um, lack of courage. You'll always have a philosophy to back up what you don't, like what you want to avoid. Everybody has a philosophy to back it up. Mm. So the, the, if you want something, look at your philosophy because your philosophy is usually what's keeping you from having it. You need to change the way you look at the world. You need to change the way you see things and the way you act in accordance to the world because your philosophy will justify your cowardice. So for example, um, for the young men out there who maybe there's a, there's a woman or some, somebody you like out there, I don't know, it was like that's what it was for me. If I have a philosophy that is, oh, she's she's not gonna want to talk to me. Uh, she's with her friends. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm I'm I, my hair isn't done today. I'm not dressed right. If you, those are all philosophies that justify you being alone and not being the person you want. The philosophy that is gonna get you success is, I'm always going out the door ready to meet the person I'm looking for. And the moment I see her, him, whoever, I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to them. And I'm going to say, Hey, how you doing? And, and I will go from there. Yeah. And, and that, and that is much better than, Oh, my hair isn't done. Oh, I just wore the wrong thing. Or, Oh, I'm a little tired today. Or, Oh, she's with her friends, whatever you see it. The opportunity presents itself. You take action and you just go. And you have to get that mindset of it doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter if it's scary. It doesn't matter about any of the bullshit that has kept me away from this thing that I want. And if you start doing this stuff, you will get results. But what do you have to face in the meantime? Rejection. You have to face, uh, you know, getting ignored. Brutal. That's even worse than rejection. You have yeah. to face all sorts of stuff. Getting laughed at maybe, you know. And then you, you know, and then, and then you might have to look at yourself and be like, you know what? I'm really out of shape and, I, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm broke and I'm blah, blah, blah. And you look at yourself and you, okay, I got to fix some things because I'm not really a good partner for the kind of person I want. See how it's changing who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, I went on a yeah, lot of things, no, but I... these are ideas that I feel like if, if, if we handle them, they become to fill in the big picture stuff that we're not understanding. Yeah. I mean, this is. It's definitely it's it, it's been interesting sort of angle that, that whole dialogue that and and where it's it's come to I okay. think toward towards the end here it's given me some interesting some interesting thoughts on it I mean I just on a on like a small smaller note I'll say it's it's you know I do also think that there's a, a side of this that where you hear those stories of people who look back on their life or their career or something. And they say, thank God I didn't get the thing that I wanted. You know, like <laughs> there's, there's a part of his, so there's always this thing to me about like this, this hyper focus on what is it that you want and that you desire? Mm -hmm. Because I think that that is maybe the most confused part of ourselves that we live with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that sometimes just when I'm being really honest with myself there, I have days where I, I'm honestly like, I actually don't even, where I actually feel like I'm actually, I think I'm so fucking confused about <laughs> what, what I actually want that I don't like where I'm just like, I have absolutely no idea. You know, where I actually think that I'm like, I, I th like sometimes I think that I know what I want, but then I have days where I'm like, <sighs> Is that really what it is? And so that's a, that's a really, that can be a very big and tough and challenging 
question. Sometimes a thing that you want is not really the actually the thing that you truly want, but as we've talked but about many times do, before, yeah. but you think you do. And sometimes and this, is, this is good. You're getting into this. Yeah. And, and sometimes the yeah. pursuit of it is, 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 to is find important. Out you don't want it. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and it, and it guides you. And there's that whole, you know, another, yeah. One of those famous little quotes, wherever it came from. It's like, it's like, if you want to, if, if you want to tell God a joke, tell him your plans. Right. Uh, so there's there's that whole side of it as well and then there's this other thing that you were you know with some of the things you were saying that i was like oh in terms of the big picture this thing that you're saying about what's the philosophy underneath it that that supports you know that sort of story that you're that you're telling about these things and it's it's very much a big picture type of thing and and about taking that that big picture view on your life because how many of us are just we we do have that small picture thing of just trying to and you know and don't get me wrong there there can be a lot of very good reasons for it and and challenges and just trying to get by day to day sometimes really can be a struggle and it can be difficult to keep that big picture in mind because you're just oh i just got to deal with this little thing here and this little thing here and this little thing here and you lose perspective on what the whole thing's about and you know you're the sort of scenario of just trying to approach a person that you're attracted to right and the whole thing is like well what's the big picture it's like well you really want to have you really want to find a life partner. You want to spend your life with somebody. And how are you going to meet that that person? And and so that's suddenly going into a bigger picture, like a slightly bigger picture than what you might have been in before, right? What What is this actually about? Why do I want to go and talk to that person? Oh, it's actually because I want this, this thing in my life. But if you get too narrow focus like oh my my hair isn't right yeah, yeah, i didn't yeah. i i was like oh, i haven't been to the gym in two weeks i i don't feel you know it's just like <laughs> you know like it's like your your focus is just become so so narrow so small yeah and so often you don't even know the thing that a person's going to be attracted to in you anyhow yeah i got, right? I got something to throw into this <laughs> sure go for it so even thinking about your life partner is too small Oh yeah, no, it's still, it's too, it's still, still a small too small. Thing. That seems like a big thing. Oh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the love of my life. And like, you know, yeah. and I first heard you say that. I'm like, wait a minute, that's, you're thinking too big. You got to just focus on the moment, be present. I'm like, no, wait a minute. That's too small. Cause the thing is, is that big picture is big picture is that you, you're going to, you're going to meet somebody that will open your mind to that making sense right now it's just theory because mm -hmm. you saw someone else do it or it's something that happens in culture or it's normal and so then you know i like you know people get caught into this i get caught into this idea right it's like well you know i i want to have these things that everyone else has and, and i'm supposed to do this and at this point in my life this is supposed to be worked out or figured out and it's like you know don't look at it that way you know, and the other thing too is like minute focus is part of the problem as well. It's like we get so caught up into like, um, you know, is this like, like thinking about herself, first of all, that's so minute. That's like the worst. Because if you're thinking about yourself, like even like we know this is an acting, like you just destroy your performance. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. It's over, right? So stop thinking about yourself. But it's like that in life. And, and the next best thing to do is start thinking about them. And just connecting with them and then going, okay, well, what's going on for them? But like, look at it in a, even a bigger picture than that and just go like, like what's going on in the whole, in the whole thing here, like the whole play. Cause like you and this person are just a couple people in a billions right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your story, although it's important to you in the scheme of humanity and everything, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? So you got to look at it and just be like, well, I'm just talking to somebody. You know, if they don't want to talk to me, then I won't talk to them. And if, 
if maybe they do want to talk to me, but their guard's up, I'll try to get through their guard. And, you know, and if they don't want to put their guard down, then you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll look at a different approach next time and whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, for example, I took my motorcycle out the other day. This is an interesting moment. I don't know if it relates, but I took my motorcycle out. I'm touring around, exploring the area and I go into this area and it's, it did say private property, but I, it kind of like, it, here's the thing. I definitely went into private property, but I didn't realize I had because I kind of thought it, there was a fork. And so I thought maybe it was, that was private property and I was actually okay. So I'm like, oh, it looks okay. And I'm driving my motorcycle and I'm going down and it leads down to this marina or whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is really beautiful. And like, you know, whatever. And as I'm coming back up, this older guy comes out and he like steps in front of my bike. And he's like, hey, he's like, what are you doing over here? And I was like, uh, I'm just exploring there. He's like, don't you know this is private property? I was like, oh, I didn't realize. I'm sorry. He's like, well, how would you like it if someone came into your area? And I'm like, you know, you're right. I just moved here. I'm exploring the area. And he's like, oh, okay. And I'm just like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man. I'm like, sorry, man. I didn't mean to interrupt. And he's like, oh, he's like, oh, that's cool. He's like, nice bike. I'm like, thanks. And we start chatting. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> man. Well, look, I'm sorry to disturb you. And I took off. This whole interaction started off with conflict. Hey, you're yeah. in our zone. Like, get out of here. What are you doing? You're being inconsiderate to nice bike. Hey, nice to meet you. You yeah. know, whatever. The thing is, is that in the big picture of things, the first priority for him was, hey, you're in, you're basically in my backyard and like, I'm, I'm protecting it and I don't want you here and I don't want anyone taking advantage of this or whatever mm. to, um, you know, hey, we're connecting. Mm -hmm. And so if you get too caught in the minute of, oh, I've done something wrong. I made a mistake. It's the end of the world, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you get all caught in that. It lives there. But you know, I'm looking at it going, okay, look, I'm, I'm here. I'm leaving because I was on my way back out. And I'm like, um, now we're clear. Cool. Nice to meet you. I'm from here too. Now let's, you yeah. know, whatever. Okay, great. Hey, nice bike. Okay, have a good evening. Sorry to disturb you. And we're off and we're, we're, we're peaceful, right? And there's, there's, a, there's a shift. The thing is, is that, you know, at the end of the day, like I... I was looking at it as I was driving away. I was thinking, you know, Brandon, what's your philosophy? My philosophy is harmony, peace. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what did I get? I got harmony and peace because at the end of the day, my philosophy justified my harmony and peace. And no matter how he came at me, even if he wanted to fight me, it was still going to lead to harmony and peace because that's where I was headed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so like the thing is, is you will get what you're after. Um, and, and the thing is, if you're not getting what you're after then it might, like you said earlier, that might not be what you're after, but you don't know that yet, you know, cause there is this part of me that's like, you know, it's probably in there where it's just like, yeah, fuck you, man. Telling me what to do. Like I'm going to fucking jet off in my bike. So go fuck yeah. yourself. You know, like there's definitely that option, but you know, you get where you put your energy, you get where you put your attention. Right. And so, you know, like my, Big picture, I just look at it like this. Like, you're just a branch on a tree growing towards the sun, connected to something else. Like, you're you're just a small, tiny part of the forest, right? But your part matters, but your branch will grow to wherever, you know, you formulate directing yourself. And if you're trying to grow towards the ground and, and the world's like, no, the sun's up here, you're going to find out pretty quickly that you're going the wrong way and you're going to get negative results, right? Which is going to cause more and more pain. Ultimately, you're going to start to go, wait a minute, I need to change direction. So if you keep going after something and you just keep getting pain and it's just like it's not working and you're trying to force it and all this bad stuff keeps happening. Mm -hmm. st try to look and go like, well, where am I trying to go? You know, what am I mm -hmm. trying to like, like, what do I think I'm going to get? Because sometimes we get so like narrow and, and blind to what we're doing that we think we have to do things. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to get too far, of course, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's yeah. Like, I, like, I feel like big picture is here. Here's my thing. Big picture is recognize you're connected at the same time, like finding your own light, you know? Well, yeah. Finding how you, how you, like how you actually fit within the whole thing, 
Yeah. Right. And know that, that you're not knowing, the whole... knowing first of all, that you fit with the whole yes. thing. Right. And then figuring out, okay, so what is, what, so what is that thing that, that, that I am to fit within this? And that's, you know, part of, you know, that's knowing yourself, right. Which is a, is a big thing because sometimes, yeah, like it's, it's learning just to figure out the mystery that you are to yourself is, is never one of those things that you just, there's no answer to that, right? Necessarily, it's, which is something I always get a kick out of when I think of how I feel like I learned acting to a large degree. It was just like, you're going to learn who this person is and there's an answer for them. <laughs> and and actors do very often treat it that way. It's like, I just have to investigate and, you know, and I'll find the answer to this human being and then I can perf play them. And it's like, well, I mean, you're going to learn a lot about them, hopefully, and you will continue to do so. And hopefully by the time you stop performing, you've never stopped. Like you've just continued to try and understand and discover it's, it's, you know, it's that way in performance it's that way in, in life as well. And it's interesting the one of the things that's coming up for me in this sort of the direction of this thing is, is actually something that I've been thinking about a lot recently and it's this question and it might might throw some some people off to to talk about this but it i think psychologically from what we've under what is happening to, to, to again try and try and make this as reasonable of a proposition <laughs> to everyone as possible this is something that a lot of very learned intellectual people are talking about more and more and more but it's this question of what do you worship, right? And this has become, I think, uh, a, this question has, I think, been coming back up in our culture and our society uh, in a powerful new way, simply because we are, in, there's this understanding that we all worship something, right? And if you, hate that word, but it's, there's, there's a, a truth to that thing. Right. And so we're talking about, you know, before it used to be for a lot of people, religion, but now we're a more secular world. And it's like, so what's replaced that? And a lot of people are very concerned about what has replaced that thing is maybe not that much better than the thing that people were trying to get away from. Right. And I, I don't want to comment too much on that whole debate because it's not really important but this this just this question of of well what is it that you worship in your life what's your main thing i mean that's a big picture question right what is that thing that underlies and guides your choices your direction what you're what you're doing with your life mm -hmm. right and you're talking about this this interaction where you you know you're like no this is going to be you know like peace and you know like a peaceful and non-conflictual conflictual type, conflictual is that i don't even know if that's a harmonious. word harmonious harmonious okay used. sorry yeah i couldn't think of think of the, the word <laughs> a harmonious interaction right and it's it's funny because i've always just somewhat always held a belief as well throughout my life of of I can I can move through conflicts without without you know a fight kind of a thing and even in situations where I've had people around me think that it's like oh shit well, this is about to turn into like a like an actual physical altercation and I've just been able to diffuse mm -hmm. those types of situations and, and it's like because and but then there's people who they seem to end up in physical altercations with people all the time, right? And there's this, and to me, you could potentially look at it in that sense. Like, okay, well, what, what do these people worship, right? What is on their altar of, of their life, yeah, yeah. right? And, and that's, I, that's something that I've incorporated into my list of, sort of questions for actors too. It's like any part you play, you should, 
you should be seriously navigating that question mm -hmm. because it tells a lot about a person. What does this per person worship? You know, is it is it money? Is it is it fame? Is it um, you know like whatever it could be? It could it could be a more spiritual nature. It could be a more material nature type of thing. But what is it? Because that's it's informing it's informing really everything that they do mm -hmm. yeah and just because you know just because you might hold something of value like you worship or whatever it doesn't mean that you do it in a in a good way like um you know there's uh yeah ab yeah absolutely. i mean people like for, for example like sometimes people can worship money but they're broke all the time like they're just you know and it's like well so you you know just because you worship it doesn't mean that you're going to get blessed with it or something there's people who worship money and all they talk about is how broke they are and how much life's a struggle and how and all they ever think about is how hard everything is and how unfair everything is and i get it it's a seductive thing because there is a certain kind of reality to you know the economy of things and all of that and resources and whatnot but you know, one of the things, like, if you want to go back to, like, manifestation, if you behave and act in a, in a way in which you're broke and in poverty, by all likelihood, you will stay broke and in poverty because you behave in accordance to a way that will make that so. And even if, you know, and you see this because even if you do make a lot of money, you'll find a way to spend it and get rid of it and, and just essentially find yourself broke and, and struggle all over again. Because the, the problem is, is that it becomes comfortable. And, uh, you know, I heard something the other day. I thought this was actually interesting. I don't think this is too far off topic because it kind of relates. But your comfort zone is necessary in the sense that you go there to recuperate, to repair, to to be in some type of peace and, and, and serenity to essentially adjust and work it out. If you're in a comfort zone and you're just disconnecting and you're like, ah, I like, I've just, I don't want to be here. And you're trying to run away from life. You're not, you're going to get stuck in that comfort zone because that comfort zone is you escaping reality. Comfort zone should be a time of facing reality in peace and going, okay, you know what? I'm on the weekend, I'm in my comfort zone, I'm having a beer, I'm watching the tube, whatever you're doing. And you're like, I hate my fucking job. That's, that's a call to action. That's not a, let's mm -hmm. have another beer and drown that feeling out. Let's fucking get rid of that feeling and I'll go back on Monday. And you know, that's a, that's a, that's a call to action. What would it take for me to quit this fucking job I hate or to start liking it? That's what your comfort zone is for. It's not for you to, to run further away from reality. And I think the thing is, is that we do these things. Like people show up to their job and they hate their job and they hate it every day for 40 years or 50 years or something. They hate it the whole time. And, and like, imagine you, it was your best friend and they kept saying, hey, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate my job every weekend. I hate my job, mm -hmm. I hate my job. Maybe you have a friend like this and they say this. <laughs> yeah. You should be saying to your friend, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to quit and get a new job? Are you going to start liking it? What would it take for you to like it? What would you have to do to like it? Like, mm -hmm. what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? How do we change what you don't like and start making more of what we do like? You yeah. know, the thing is, is that here's the thing. We live our life like we're disconnected from reality. And this is big picture. Big picture is, hey, man, if I don't do anything about this job I hate, you know, this is an example, you will continue to worship hating your job and going down the road of hating your life and, and, and trying to run away from your life and do all this. And then, you, you know, you're going to be faced with something. So this is where people don't want to go. This is the pain that comes back. What else am I going to do? It's the only thing I've ever done. I have a family to support. Okay, great. All that's true. That's what you're going to deal with on your weekend, in your comfort zone, when you get home from this shit. And you're going to deal with that and you're going to answer those questions well. 
What could I do to support my family in an alternative way? Is there a way where I could bridge out of this? Is there a way I could put some money aside to give myself a few months to, to, to take a leap, to try something else, to whatever? Yeah. Or just fucking live in this shit because that's the shit you chose to live in. You get what you are, not what you want. And you are, when you run away from your life, you continue to be the life you're running away from. You don't change it. And look, I've, I've lived a lot of different lives. I've, I've, I've made a lot of different transitions in my life. And sometimes it's been real hell. And sometimes it's been real blessing. And, you know, and sometimes you want the blessings to last forever and you want the hell to just end. And sometimes it feels like the reverse. But mm -hmm. the thing is, is that you have to, at some point, ask yourself the real question. Am I okay with this? And if I'm not, what am I going to do about it? You know, and this is yeah. our part in, in the whole, because, you know, here's the thing. Like if you're a little treeling underneath the forest and all the big trees are taking all the light up in the sky, you can look it up at all those trees from this little treeling you are and go, it's so unfair. They're blocking all the light. They got there first. And now I'm so late to the party. When am I ever going to do it? Or you can say, Hey, you know what? I'm inspired by all these. I'm going to grow upward towards that. I'm going to break through that barrier there and I'm going to get the light above them, you know, and, and you might go, well, that's impossible. I, I, they're, they're way ahead of me. I'll never have time. And the thing is, is that you need to look at yourself in terms of something that like things can change. You know what I mean? And, and you might find that you might say, well, I'm not working against these trees. Here's another philosophy thing. I know I'm going off on a bunch of shit here, but <laughs> You start out that little treeling looking up at these trees blocking the light from you. And instead of looking at these other trees blocking the light from you and saying, oh, it's unfair, blah, blah, blah. That's your philosophy. That's your story. Why don't you go and say to those trees, hey, I want to be up there with you guys. Can you part a little bit? Give me a little bit of light. Give me a little bit of a chance. And you know, you might find that these things that you initially looked as obstacles are actually your best friends and your advocates and your helpers. But we have this mentality where we look at the world like enemy. That's why I say like this whole situation, and I'll go back to that, with harmony and peace with this guy. I could look at him like enemy, or I could look at him like advocate, like friend, like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Maybe it's only a temporary interaction. But you know what? It was a positive interaction. What does that mean in the scheme of things? Well, I turned a guy that was initially against me to, to be, hey, like, you know, like, good day, nice bike, have a good one, see you later. See you later, like, yeah. I'm not even supposed to be here. We won't see each other yeah. later, not here, you know, because I'm not coming back because I'm not going to infringe yeah. on your zone, but unless I'm invited. But the thing is, you see what I'm saying? Like, like philosophy, man. It's Yeah, uh, oh, you know, no, absolutely. It's, I mean. It connects the whole, and it's how we see the whole, and, and that's relation to the whole. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's like yeah. what, yeah, like, what is what is your life about right and can i say one thing while you sure. have a thought universal truth you mentioned this in the beginning i feel like this is what this is all coming back to what's the universal truth that's the big picture yeah i yeah. mean it's like and it's these questions i feel that we've become so disconnected from you know i think that you know we've become so individualized in in our lives and, and we become so disconnected from from our culture and or and from the world around us i saw this ad last night actually for some airline whatever and it was penelope cruz and some new area where it's like you literally have your own little like it doesn't look large, you know, oh, you Penelope Cruz is tiny. Yeah. Your own yeah. little room. You just, you just, you just shut everyone out <laughs> and be in your own little space. And I just thought, wow. Like, and they're selling it as being like, oh, isn't this just so great? This is, isn't it. And like, Hey, don't get me wrong. I like my alone time, you know, when I can get it as much as the next person, but I'm just like, is this like, is this the height of civilization? You just get to shut like, like, oh, the more I can shut myself off from everyone and everything, the better, you know? And it's like, you know, no wonder we have such a mental health fucking crisis 
It's because like we just we're so disconnected from each other and we don't thrive that way. We're social animals and, and we need to feel a sense of that connection and purpose in the world. Like we're like we're contributing to something like we're giving to something bigger than ourselves. And so philosophy, you're saying philosophy, these questions about, you know, what is life? What is it to be a human being? What is a good life? What is that actually? You know, these are philosophical questions and ones that we still wrestle with and why art is is still so relevant. And to paraphrase one of my favorite quotes, which we've talked about on the show by Frederick Buchner, uh, he says, art is one of the few places left where we can speak to each other of holy things, right? When we're so um, divorced from religion and, and spirituality to a large degree. It's just like, we still need to have places where we can talk about what this, some way to talk about this stuff, mm -hmm. right? To, to engage with these philosophical questions. And I think that we're, we, we've, we've stopped engaging with a lot of these things. And we've said, we've tried to fill that gap with, um, you know, cars and streaming services and <laughs> TVs and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's, hey, there's nothing wrong there, with a and nice TV no, and a nice car. I'm, no, there isn't. Hey everybody, this is Evan. And this episode is brought to you by my book. Yes. I recently released a book called the actor's awakening, connecting spirituality to craft, expand yourself as an actor and your craft through a spiritual perspective. Take a journey that will explore universal philosophies and insights to help you understand human nature in a profound way and develop practices to take your work to another level. Again, that's The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft, available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. And as always, if you like the show, please subscribe. Yeah, there isn't, but to to bring in one of, you know, again, our favorites, we probably reference him on every show, but, but Alan Watts, you know, I remember one of his lectures, he says, it's like, these things are all fine. There's nothing bad about them just don't think you're gonna get anything from them mm -hmm. you know that may be a good time yeah but it's like <laughs> you know eventually it's like yeah. you, you know like but it's I, I, you temporary. can it's, it's so it's so temporary you know you that's get so right it's good to have temp it's like good to have some ice cream every now and then mm -hmm. but it's like life isn't just ice cream but it's nice to have ice cream you know like i got this motorcycle evan it's fucking blast you know honestly i'm like this is the most fun i've ever had <laughs> like i'm like a kid this is so great. But here's the thing. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a nice thing on the journey, but it's not the point. It's, yeah. the, you know, and I think the thing is, is that I, I do think so. Okay. Hinduism, right? Just throw in something. <laughs> Motorcycles. Okay. Hinduism. Hinduism. Here we go. <laughs> Stay with me here. So Hinduism, from what I understand, is the kind of belief that everything out here is all called maya, which is all an illusion. Everything's all an illusion. And then there's the self. And the self, you know, is basically interacting with this illusion, right? And so you look at it, you go, okay, well, my motorcycle, it's like, according to Hinduism, it's an illusion, right? And it's, 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 I think the thing is, is like, when you're, um, and, you know, and you go to Buddhism, for example. So there's other philosophies, right? Where the, like, I think it's called a bodhisattva, which is somebody who's aware of the illusion, but then kind of like still plays in it anyway, but knowing it's an illusion. The thing is, is that these things we get caught up in. So like initially these things that feel good, you can still play in them, but also know that they're not, they're not really the point. There's like an illusion and it's like you, you can still enjoy it and, 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 and like have fun with it and play with it and be like, okay, hey, like I'm playing in the illusion. And then eventually what you'll find is that the illusion just kind of runs out, it wears out, and then you need something new and you got it's something else you've moved on, you know, and now you, something else has got your interest. But if you see yourself as not the illusion, but separate from the illusion, you go, yeah, well, this, this was a fun ride. Like it was like at Disneyland, like this was fun and we went on the roller coaster and now it's over mm -hmm. and like, let's go to the next thing. But if you keep going like, oh, God, God, go back to that moment when things were so great. And maybe if I just get this next sports car, this next thing, then it'll be good. Then it'll yeah. be good again. And it's like you're just chasing the illusion and it's like a drug now. And I think, um, you know, that's what makes this life so complicated is like we we get so caught in 
the external world and materialism and these wants that we think we need and all of this type of stuff. And, and there's a certain amount of getting what you want, which I think is important because it makes you active and it gives you something to do. But I think there's also this point of like, just coming to the point where you go, you know what, I wanted this and I don't anymore. And that's also just as good as getting what you want. Recognizing you yeah. don't want something is like freeing. Just like, you know, when you finally get something, it's kind of freeing because you got it. It's also freeing when you actually genuinely realize, you know, like there was a long time I really wanted this mm -hmm. and now I don't. And that's actually feels really good to not want that anymore because yeah. I spent a lot of time thinking I wanted that. And then it doesn't mean you lost. It's actually a good thing. It's a win. Well, yeah, sometimes because it creates enough pain and suffering in your life. That you just go like, why, why am I doing this? Well, that's another thing about wants. And Alan Watts talks about this too, right? Is that the wants create the pain and suffering. Yeah. And here's the thing. We love the pain and suffering. The thing is, is people, like especially goal-oriented people, you, you start to like the pain. It's like it's, it feels good to be in that struggle of trying to get something. Like it feels so fucking good to like, I'm working at it. I'm getting closer. I can feel myself getting closer. Mm. I accomplished this well, thing. You know, and then, but it's painful because you don't have it and then you get it and there's this release and then it's like, then you don't want anything for a second and you're like, oh man, I need, I need my next thing. I need my next hit of something to want. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's, I was, cause I mean, I think that there's, there's different kinds of, of pain here. Cause there's a certain kind of pain that's. I think the thing that I'm I, I'm sort of thinking more about is the kind of pain that is that emptiness at the end of it all, you know. And, oh, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and I'll just no, say one thing: yeah, the the, the bodhisattva yeah. is, uh, as I as I understand, the bodhisattva is an enlightened being who who could pass on to the next realm, but sticks around, comes comes back to to help save mm. people uh but there's mm. uh but the buddhists also have this uh i think it's in in buddhism there's different types of people there's sort of like almost like buddhist archetypes of people who who <laughs> exist and and one of them is the um the realm of the hungry ghosts and so the in and, and everyone sort of embodies one of these things and the hungry ghosts are like the people who uh, as it sort of implies, like they're, they're just, they're never, they're always hungry. They're, they're never satisfied. They get the thing. And then I need another thing and another thing and another thing. And there's, there's an emptiness to that thing. And I think it comes back to that. Well, what's the big picture, right? What is the big picture for you? Because it doesn't seem like that's in place despite so many incredible potential successes that you have there's there's this constant painful emptiness about your life right and and the big sort of philosophical questions that we're talking about and and that bigger picture thing is very often what people end up searching for they end up seeking something it's just like i've got er everything how come I'm still so unhappy? Right. Right. Like what the hell is, is going on? And it's, uh, and there are, are many paths in which that can lead a person on, but it's, it takes you to a place where it's just like, well, it's, it's a little bit immaterial, right? There's something that's a little bit inexplicable about what that thing is. And, and I think that that's why, that can be such an interesting and, and powerful place for people to arrive to. You know, Jim Carrey has that, I think, somewhat famous speech where he says, I hope you get everything that you ever wanted to realize it's not what you, not what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause you have a huge house full of things and there's, there's just, you, you're still there and, and this feeling is still there. And, where where do you find that happiness and where do you find that joy 
And there is one other thing that you uh, that I'm coming back to uh, you had said that I want to comment on. You, you're talking about you know you're looking up this metaphor of the trees and and oh I'm looking at these big trees and they've risen to to where I want to go, but man they've had years of growth ahead of me and so, and it's like I I think that that. It's a, it's an interesting image, but there's a part of me that can't help but feel that the metaphor is not entirely accurate for how <laughs> there, because I think it leaves out a certain dimension of human life and experience and, and how things play out sometimes yeah. because, because there are, are people who you bring even though you might not have been in something for a while or, or you've maybe never been in something that you feel compelled to go to, you know, like when you're going that direction, you're just like, Oh my God, there's all these people who've been doing this for such a long time. Who am I? Right. But there can be such tremendous power to a person who has gone and lived this other. All right. We're back after technical corrections here so to pick up on what i was saying is that in terms of your metaphor with the trees and and these things have this started me thing is is that i guess it, it I, if i were to try maybe to try and make the metaphor work again <laughs> it's it's like almost like your perspective is incorrect because the thing is that all of the experiences that you've had up to that point before you've decided you're, you mm -hmm. want to try and do this thing, well, you've been growing too. And there's all of these things that you have that you can actually bring to that thing. Sometimes an outsider's perspective on a new thing, it can be so valuable. You can, you can be bringing something that, that someone else hasn't thought of. Right. So that was really my only point there is that like sometimes you're, you're even your thought that, oh, these, you know, these people, these trees have had all of this time ahead of me. And it's like, well, yes, that's true. But you're failing to recognize you're failing to recognize all of these things that you might have to give to this thing right? Your own experience, your own voice, your own understanding and perspective on this thing is maybe something that no one's ever heard of. Right. Right. And maybe that thing is one of the most important things to happen to this. Right. So that was all I was trying to say to well, that. Yeah. So much of it's perspective. So let me ask you a question. If I gave you something, you can never give it away to anyone else. Um, if I was to give you a billion dollars, can't give it away. But I'll give you a billion dollars. The cost of it for you is that you will not wake up tomorrow. Would you take the billion dollars? <laughs> no, definitely of not. not. Of course you wouldn't. Which means that your tomorrow is worth more than a billion dollars. But we don't think of life that way. We, we take tomorrow for granted. And we think, oh man, if only I had this money to pay my rent, to do this thing, to buy this thing I want. And it's like... Yeah, and you have tomorrow and you have this uh, theoretically many tomorrows and you just don't even care and you just take them all for granted. And, you know, uh, I took a walk through the forest. I love taking walks through the forest. And as I was walking through this one area, I have pictures. There's these trees and this, they've been, they've fallen over and they have these massive, like all their roots got ripped out. And so they have this big plate of roots underneath them. And, uh, they were all, all of them had fallen east, every single tree. And I'm just looking through this area. I'm like, man, there's so many trees that have fallen over and every single one had fallen east. And if you looked onto the horizon, you could see that they had kind of clear cut to, to put in, like there'd been uh, developments over in that area. Mm. And I was like, how interesting. All of these trees used to be protected by other trees. And they cut down those trees and the roots in these trees were not deep enough when the windstorm came, which obviously was a windstorm that just blew all these things over. And so uh, thinking about this little treeling in the middle of all these other big trees and you think, oh man, if only I was there first. Well, don't forget these big trees are protecting you 
from elements, from wind, from all sorts of stuff. Mm. And so there's perspective. We just lose perspective all the time and we don't see the big picture. Well, it's interesting that th what you just brought up, it's like that made me think of big picture, but in a different way. Okay. You know, just like this sort of interference in a thing. You have no idea the, the, the ripple effects of these things. And this is one of, this is not just mine, but, but a lot of people, why a lot of people have big questions around things like technology, you know, what we're doing with technology and things like that. And, and along with that are hubris yeah, uh, with what we can do with technology, which is extraordinary. But at the same time, we go, it's like, yes, but these interferences you have no idea what this is this might do right like we just because we don't have that big picture and don't get me wrong people there there's a lot of time and resources that is trying to that, that goes into trying to fully understand or as understand as best as possible the potential impact of something but we're still so limited in how much of that we can understand, even with the most intelligent minds in in their fields applied to something, there's always unexpected things that that come up. And and then if you and then you want to throw in the whole thing of financial incentive and how that that pushes things along to into into sort of release into the world, you know before we've really thought about the potential consequences of it, then, you know, we have a situation where it's, yeah, like we're dealing with the biggest th threats to us and humanity are all technological ones, right? Or have been caused by technological things that have been done. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, like what are the biggest threats to us as a global humanity? It's all has to do with technology, right? I'm kind of going off on a on another thing, well, but it's yeah. just it's we, it's big picture stuff, right? It's all like it, it all comes down to, to big picture stuff. And, you know, that's a big picture. But then in, in trying to understand, OK, so then why has that happened? And that's another well, we have to go deeper and we have to go and look at this in a bigger perspective. But so much of. All of those problems, I think, have to do with having too narrow of a perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things where it's like we try to fix something, we cause another problem. And we try to do something or get something and we cause, you know, another issue that, you know, is, uh, is just, I don't know, it just creates some other problem. And then you got to solve that problem and whatever. And it's endless, right? And I think the thing is, is like, when we're looking at this this whole concept of big picture, I think one of the things to consider is that you you don't necessarily know the effects of what it is you think you're doing and what you think you're after. And so before you're too certain about how this has to be and you're supposed to get what you want and you're supposed to do what you're, you're trying to do, if it's not working, if there's something about it that is, is you're getting feedback that like there's something off about it, then I think it's important to consider that maybe that's saving you from catastrophe. And that can be on the micro level and your personal level, and it can be on the macro level in, in a cultural societal type of thing as well, you know, whatever, worldly thing. But the thing is like, you know, like... There's all sorts of weird shit we're trying to do. Like, you know, we're like, oh, we use too much energy. We use too much power. We need to fix this. And then these solutions that they're coming up with, they're not good solutions. And that's the bottom line. And people are like, oh, the electric car, that'll solve everything. Wind power, that'll solve everything. No, it fucking won't. It's not the right solution. I can tell you it's not the right solution because look into this shit and you're going to find out it's not because because they don't have enough fucking power to, to fucking charge these fucking cars. What's going to end up happening? Here's the real solution. You're not going to have a car unless you're of a certain class of a certain person and you're going to be able to afford that freedom. And everyone else, you're going to be stuck on automated traffic. You're going to be on a, a glorified version of the bus 
That, that That's what's going to happen. So this whole illusion that you're going to have your own electric car and all that's going to happen in the future and that's going to get net zero, it's not going to fucking work that way. It just doesn't, the math doesn't add up. But the thing is, is they need people to buy into the, 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 the dream of this thing. And the problem is, is like you go, okay, people believe it. You think you're going to get what you want. You think you're going to get this thing. You're not. So you got to ask yourself, you got to look into the future. You got to see into the bigger picture of like, where does this really lead? Don't just listen to the narrative. Cause like, you know, some rapper is telling you, oh, Hey, I got, you know, this is how I live. This is what I do. And people believe that shit. And they think that's how you're supposed to live. You know, whatever it is, look into the future of, of where this stuff leads. And you're going to find out that, you know, spending all your money while you're young, buying fancy cars and jewelry is a dumb thing to do that leads to, you know, really negative outcomes. You know what I mean? And I, like, I'm not saying that the electric car is bad. I'm not like, I'm not saying yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I'm just saying that there are problems in the way that we're trying to do a lot of the stuff we're trying to do. And we're, we don't realize the cost that's about to come if we actually were to take these steps as quickly as we think we're supposed to take them. And, you know, it, it, you just got to you got to ask more questions and look a little bit further than just trusting the narrative, because right now we have we essentially have uh, corporations and we have kind of like, I would say, at least a certain amount of corrupt po politicians in power. And they're looking at how they can exploit opportunity in this moment. And they take our better nature and they get us to go down this road with them and do, but it's not doing anything for us. It's actually just lining their pockets. If we really wanted a solution, we need to look at how we're gonna live in a hundred years, not in 10 years. We need to look, but the problem is, is we won't do that because we're just thinking about ourselves and our own life and our own like, you know, and we're thinking about the next 30 or 40 or 50 years of our life. We're not thinking of a hundred years and you know, our, our, our children's grandchildren. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. the problem. Like that's where a lot of this stuff well, falls, I mean, it, falls which, apart. Which it makes us exactly the same as that the generations rich, that, that rich class that you're talking about yeah. right it's focused on yourself and about the next 40 50 years it makes us exactly the same and i mean you know i, I feel like we're heading into like a territory that's like we're, we might be getting into the weeds as fascinating as a conversation sure. as it can be to get into but uh i'll just say that that all i think all of that stuff as big as it sounds, because they, they are big conversations, I, I still would say it's like, it's still a bigger, it's still a bigger problem, you know? And I will point to people who've thought this through a lot more than I have, but who've definitely been shaping a lot of my thinking uh, in, you know, recently, but um, Paul Kingsnorth, you listen to, to him talk about you know how a lot of this the stuff that we're trying to do is really just about making m making this really terrible system sustainable you know yeah. like it's just like oh we need to make the terrible system sustainable so that it can keep working because otherwise because it literally cannot keep working the way that it's going right so it's like how do we make it a sustainable and green thing that's still terrible that still requires people to you know travel you know an hour each way to a job that they hate so that they can earn a little bit of money to pay for a bunch of shit that they can't really afford that they don't really need that they don't really want we well, still have that empty feeling inside so the problem that's great that's a great point the yeah. problem is still bigger the problem is still deeper the problem is like yeah. why do we think that that is acceptable why do we think that that is the good way of living? And we've convinced ourselves that that's the case, right? And this is, you know, I know this is maybe more of a personal diatribe than I usually go into on, on, this, on, on this podcast, but these are the things that I think, coming back to like art and philosophy, that these are the things that, that, it's often trying to wake us up to it's just like ask these questions because like just look at what 
your life is and, and life and what life is around you and for others and, and get really honest about how certain things are. And it's like, and is this, is this actually what life is, right? Is this actually the peak and the pinnacle of human experience, right? And, and getting very serious about these, these questions, or at least very sincere about these questions, because they don't necessarily have concrete, definite answers, but or the, outcomes, or outcomes, but it's the only way in which I think that we can realistically begin to address problems. And that's always the case where it, it begins with us, right? If we have a problem with, with big sort of corporate and, and just like insane billionaires, like, which some people argue shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be people who have a certain amount of wealth. I'm not going to comment on that because I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that yeah, question, yeah. but it's like, recognize how as we've been saying you're a part of it like you're you're we're all contributing to that thing and that might just be because we've bought in to something and i have sympathy for that because there is an asymmetry that exists between you know just being a regular everyday person and having and having teams of marketers that have learned things and how to influence you and and make you want things and and to try and just pad their own profits like it's not necessarily a fair fight but it doesn't make us entirely powerless in the whole thing in 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 that perspective but it's it's coming back to that question of like well what is the thing that you worship right like what is the what what is it that you worship in life and if you don't like the thing that you are worshiping because there also might be something that you say is the thing that you worship in life. But then if you actually look at how you conduct your life and how you, yeah. how you are doing things in your life, you realize that the thing that you're actually worshiping in your life is something much different. Right. And, and that all requires that philosophic introspective giving a shit about those things. And it's, and, and, that can be a hard thing to do. It can be, it can be a really devastating thing to do even, but it might also be the only way for you to actually have something that resembles a joyful life. Well, you know, I just want to say one thing. I know we're probably getting close to wrapping this baby up, but it's like, uh, y you know, having like having our advancements serve a, a system that doesn't even work like you know we're we're working out of the industrial revolution to some degree right with the technocracy that's forming and you know and we're trying to get this technocracy to serve our industrial revolution development and you know and so it's like it's almost laughable because someone in the future would look back and go ha he was talking about people actually having to travel to work and do things like like the thing is in the future we don't even know like if if we'll be even going to workplaces anymore i mean I, like maybe some people will maybe that'll be a rare thing that doesn't really happen so and much and what anymore. kind of work are people even going to be doing in the future you know there's all there's a, there's all sorts of things which this can change so dramatically but you know we're we're trying to we're trying to meet and answer problems while sustaining a problematic culture and system that is, you know, is the problem. And so like, you know, I think like culturally, you know, you would solve more problems by figuring out a way to solve the narcissist narcissism epidemic that's happening in this world than you ever would by trying to figure out what kind of way we should drive our car 
you know, because I think that driving the car is being answered by a narcissistic way of life. Like, and you look at, you go back to that airplane commercial you're talking about where it's like, oh, you can have your own private room. It's just all about, you know, worshiping the self, you know, and the self-love, self-worship thing that's going on in our culture right now, which is, you know, it has, a, it has a certain amount of, it makes sense, but there's a certain amount of it which is problematic. And we become so secular, so like individualized that we stop seeing the connectedness of everything. And so it, it creates it creates a lot of problems. And then, you know, you, it's, it's not a simple answer because you have other people out there who are trying to exploit and get power and manipulate the situation and take advantage of opportunities. And that's and that's out there. So it's hard because you have good hearted people that want to make positive change. And then you have malevolent people who are power hungry, who are going to take advantage of those people with good hearts. And, you know, like I think of it like in my journey, you know, I would say I was kind of more like, yeah, like, why can't everyone just get along and like peaceful, you know, in my younger years. And now in my older years, I'm like, hey, we got to watch out for these fuckers that are trying to take advantage <laughs> of us. You know, and it's just like, yeah. you, it's just part of life, right? You just, you know, but like what side of the spectrum? And the thing is, is like, I look at the innocent version of myself who is kind of like, why can't we all just get along? And I, and I see him getting taken advantage of by some of the people who, you know, they're abusive of power. And so there's this part of me now that wants to kind of protect somebody like that from, you know, those types of things. At the same time, I think we still need to look at a younger person's model of idealism and say, yeah, but that is kind of what we're after, isn't it? We are kind of after that. Yeah. And, and you know, our older generation who is trying to be more practical and realistic and, and mindful of the, of the landmines and pitfalls of this world, we need to kind of... Be like, okay, let's let's be safe. Let's watch out. Let's not let the the bad people get too much uh, on us. But at the same time, let's not lose our idealism and our kind mm -hmm. of like sense of connectedness and love and like getting along, right? And I'm not saying young people have it all together, but young people tend to be a little bit more idealistic because they haven't yeah. uh, messed, uh, they haven't experienced the messiness of this world, right? The, you know, and so that's one of the yeah. benefits of being young. But at the same time, you know, as you get older, you start to see like, you know, people aren't always honest. People steal. Sometimes people you think are good don't always do the good thing. And so that's why I think as you get older, you become a little bit more restrictive in your idealism, you know, and you become a little bit more practical. But sometimes that shuts you down in your ability to be open to like dream and, you know, expand. Mm hmm. But uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know, man. This has been an interesting talk. I don't know what we got yeah, to no, here at the end, but big picture shit. It definitely has been an interesting chat, that's for sure. I think the thing is, is you know, I'll say this before we share a beer. It's just about thinking about things a little bit differently. If yeah. you get a little too minute in your focus, um, maybe open your mind or maybe just see how your little focus is actually connected to something bigger than just what you think you're on, you yeah. know, on a boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Brandon. Tell me about this beer. You are the, the beer provider today. <laughs> okay, so this one's from Persephone Brewing over in uh, Sunshine Coast. And um, I don't remember the name, Evan. I, uh, I went in and I, I tried a couple beers and I was like, well, this one's real good. Give me that. And then I got into conversation as we do at a craft brewery, which was awesome. And part of the reason why I love craft breweries and you guys should definitely go there because it's an amazing brewery. It's beautiful and it's awesome. Anyway, this is some kind of IPA, I think. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like an IPA. <laughs> it had a good name too, but it's also um, it's also kind of a, a rare, uh, like they don't have it on all the time. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to try to do is try to figure out what it is this week, <laughs> and maybe next week, if you're really interested in what yeah. we're drinking, um, I will try to mention it on next podcast, but uh, no promises. It's a really good IPA. It's very good, yeah. Really very good. Very tasty, huh? Yeah. Um, all right, man. All right. Well, I don't know. Do you got final thoughts? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll I'll give give final thoughts a shot. <laughs> this has been a really kind of maybe all over the all over the place type of a conversation, but I think that something that has the big picture, trying to look at the big picture as as 
its theme is probably in some ways bound to do a little bit of that thing because like well what is what is the big picture there's there's it just talk always about, gets bigger yeah talk about a philosophical questions you know that's that that's one of them you know like well what is it and we can talk about all kinds of different different stuff you know like is it you know we talked about environmental stuff and 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 economics and power and spirituality and art you know like it's this conversation has taken us to all of these these things and the only thing that comes to mind is you know I, that's a big part of just what we're always doing on this podcast or I think attempting to do and why why we do it why we're motivated to even do it is because we love engaging with these things we love engaging with 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 these big ideas and questions and and that's what an, an artist does, right? And you don't have to explicitly be an artist in order to be an artist, you know, like to, to engage with this, this stuff. Cause I think that that's, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of one of the last bastions in which we do talk about big things, the biggest questions that, that we can imagine and think of so i mean i i guess that's really all my my final comment is just really a is, bunch of stuff is to <laughs> well just just to engage with with that yeah, side engage. of yourself because because I, th I think that we just haven't been engaging we don't do it enough you know like we've been we've been convinced and or convinced ourselves that life is just is just to, to that's the best way i think i can put it is it's like well life is just this it's just doing this stuff and it's just to, like this and people are just like that and it's all just a bunch of we're all just a bunch of random atoms you know who've randomly showed up here and just like all of this justing that is I think a very destructive part of the mentality of our culture and and I think that art and philosophy is if not saying it just overtly that it's not just or is at least asking like well, what if it's not just what if it's not just this stuff it's mm -hmm. just a bunch of you know what if what if it's something quite more something quite extraordinary something that we can't quite put our finger on something that you know like, because if you think about it life is a very strange thing it's a very strange thing i the older i get the more sort of i have moments where i'm taken by that that whole thing it's like whoa this is so strange like this is so strange but in in an extraordinary sense that that any that anything is here that 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 we're here and and it's baffling it's baffling and it's impossible to put into words which is again part of what art is all about is let's try and try and let's try and find some way of talking about that how baffling and extraordinary and and heart opening heart breaking devastating and 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 celebratory and like it just all of this stuff you know what what is all of this in in the most profound sense of 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 what it is so engage with those things and and ask those questions and and i guess i'll i've said it a few times and i'll even say like you know try really if you've made it this far <laughs> and maybe you've already been been pondering the question a little bit but like you know like what what do you worship what is the thing that you worship in your in in your life and and really be honest with that and if you don't like the thing that it seems that you're that that you do worship in your life well what what is the thing 
what is the thing that you actually really want it to be and that you want your life to actually be about yeah you know i feel like sometimes we do well most of the time we end up doing a podcast and by the end of it we come up with some type of tidy way of wrapping it up i mean not super tidy but it's usually like okay like that's what we talked about this is what it is this one i feel like just opens the door to more questions but maybe that's the point point. Mm-hmm. and um that yeah, seems uh, appropriate <laughs> you know i would say that like if if you're like looking at things and they're not you're not loving it make look at the bigger picture i would say that's like a good practice it's like just open your oh open yourself from the tunnel that you're in and like you know if you're focused on yourself a lot you know stop doing that because that's minutely focused and start focusing on the world as a whole and um you know i would say that it's like there's something practical about this which is like just see that there's more going on than you're aware of and I think that immediately opens you up to a certain amount of humility and openness and flexibility and adaptiveness. And I think those are all good qualities and they're all artistic qualities, by the way. So I think that's really good. Um, I think if you like, go like, well, what's the big picture? I think you'll always find that there's probably even a bigger picture than the biggest picture you can put in your mind and figure out. So, you know, you, you just kind of got to like go like, well, if I'm getting too caught in the small stuff, maybe I look at the bigger thing and I see like, you know, for example, if you're doing something like, I don't know, like here's a good example, I think. If you have a habit you don't like that you do, instead of looking at how you enjoy it in the moment, focus on what would happen if you keep doing it for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your life, what will happen? What will be, what will, what will be the outcome of that? And really, honestly, do it. Like, do it with, you know, full sincerity and, like, you know, and, 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 and like, feel what it would be like, you know. Um, and when you can see where things lead, you might be less inclined to do that thing in that moment that just feels good and i do think like there's a certain amount of this life which we're here to we're here to experience it how we want to experience it and it like if you're doing something and it's making you happy you know provided it's not hurting anybody else hopefully not hurting yourself at least not too bad like if you're enjoying it like I think it's good that you're enjoying it. And I think you should appreciate that. And I don't think there's any, any necessarily any problem with enjoying stuff. But if you're looking at it and you're going, you know, I'm enjoying this thing, but I can see that it's going to lead to like great pain later. Not just to me, but to people I love, to people I care about and all of that. You know, you might begin to transition your mind and just and to stop thinking about what feels good right now. And you might start thinking about what feels good in the, in the larger picture of your life. And the thing is, is like, I think the big picture is good because, you know, like I went through a depression. I've shared this a few times on the, on the podcast. And the problem with depression when you're in it is like the world is so immediate and everything's now and everything's horrible right now. And also there's this kind of like looming, like, will I ever get out of this? Is this, is this my life now? It's like, I don't want to live in this hell. Like yeah. almost like you just want to end it. It's just terrible. Right. And the thing is, is like, my one of my answers to getting out of depression was to build a life beyond this pain that i could walk into once this was done and i really think that's big picture thinking because like there is no proof that i would ever get through it i like by all accounts i was stuck I, it was done like my life was over like i i was just a depressed person and i should probably just start you know fucking wrapping up in a bow because it's done man and like i was like well you know what happened evan i was writing every day and i still wrote every day even though i was depressed and i was like well there must be some spark of hope still inside of you that believes there's some reason to do this Mm -hmm. and then i was like well what if there is and so then i just started 
trying to live my life as though there was this life I was about to go into where I would look back on this depression and I would go, wow, that was an interesting time. And look, here I am. And I actually did it. And so, you know, I would say that like, you know, big picture can get you out of a fucking mess because the mess you're in right now feels like it's your whole life and it feels like everything and it feels horrible. But this, like if you're in a mess and it's horrible, but, but it will pass. And if you can see the big picture, the big picture is, yeah, this will pass and then I'll be on to this other life. And so I would say, you know, big picture thinking like in a practical step, maybe you could use because I don't I don't even know how to wrap this baby up. But <laughs> I would just say this. Imagine your life and the lives of those you interacted with and touched as something more beautiful and better. Not just after, but because of what you're going through today. And that will allow this moment to serve the next. And if you don't believe it, I mean, I'm living proof because I was at that point where I didn't even know why I was carrying on the next day. I didn't even know why. And like, I don't know, some point it just changed. And I just had some small, tiny glimmer of a better tomorrow. And look, it's tomorrow and it's a better fucking tomorrow. Fucking way better. So if big picture is just tomorrow or big picture is 10 years from now or whatever, but like that to me is worth putting your mind on. Because if you're in pain right now, you know, pain is inevitable. You'll just suffer about it if you focus on it. But if you focus on the, the, the life you're walking towards, I think if you keep focusing on it, you will eventually become the life you're walking towards and you'll walk into that bigger picture, which this whatever pain you're in now will just be a distant memory. Thank you for listening in on our conversation today. We hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you. Head over to our website, wayoftheartist.com for more free exclusive material and learn about the show. If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.